All right. So why do you think I say that this song, in a lot of ways, is kind of the embodiment of what this class is about, uh, what we're looking for, and one of the big themes centralized in this show? <coughs> well, he changes a lot of facts here, but on a broader picture, what is happening in this song? <coughs> what? <laughs> Anybody? Well, I think that Jones is really expressing some of the regrets of offering him up his ears. But I think in the broader picture, it's kind of talking about how some of the main characters are never satisfied. You know, they're just threatened, they're just hungry for something. You know, Angelica's case, or the family case, the Hamilton's case, it's the king of some kind of. It's Showing really some of their motivators. Okay. On a simpler basis, what literally is happening? Is this sequential? Is this following the last song? Court? As just because um, they changed the history to fit the narrative? Well, they, they did. Like, for instance, Skyler has sons. But like I said, I'm, I'm going on a much simpler and broader level. What is happening? Does this song. Linearly follow the last song. It's like telling it from a different perspective. Right. This is re rewind. They go back to the same moment where Angelica is introducing Hamilton to Scholar, but from Angelica's point of view this time. How does the story change? Well, we see that Angelica is also interested romantically in Alexander, and that Alexander expressed interest in her. What are, there, what, are the, what are the different things that they're, is she attracted to different things? Does she paint a different picture of Alexander Hamilton than Eliza does? Well, she, uh, she paints him as penniless and like just trying to marry her for money, whereas Eliza is like, okay, the, I don't wanna say, uh, well, Angelica has expectations from her family. She's supposed to marry somebody rich and move up the ladder. <coughs> Eliza has the freedom to not have to go I'm up the letter like Angelica is, so she can marry down to Alexander, Alexander Hamilton, who is painless, who is viewed as not upper class yet. But on a good thread. So this idea, I mean, several times if you if you listen and if not, you'll kind of discover they have this idea that you know, you know, history is largely defined by who tells the story. And so I think right here, this you know, this song in the middle of this character. I mean, this song accomplishes a lot. It's setting up Angelica, and does anybody get the impression that she's intelligent? Do you think you get the impression she's intelligent without knowing English? What, why, what, 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 what aspects would give you that impression? <laughs> and fast and forceful. I, I think the combination, I'm pretty sure that even if I didn't know exactly what was going on, I would at least go, this woman's, you know, this woman was much more smart and much more ambitious versus Eliza, who is more naive and sweet. I mean, just musically, first off, I get a really different perspective of both of these characters. It's a pretty good read. Um, and then, like I said, we're starting to get a different story, a different picture, what might have been. Um, my guess, I mean, there's probably a lot of reasons why he wanted to make her not married, but this is just one of the biggest liberties taken in, I would dare say, in the whole show, um, in terms of really noticeable. A lot of people from here to eternity will think that you know, Angelica Schuyler was not married because it was such an essential plot point uh, in this thing. and. <laughs> So, but I think why he wanted her to not be married is this starts to also kind of show Hamilton's dance between maybe what's, um, what he wants and what he feels he needs. Oh, how, uh, sorry. Yeah. How does it, how is it that, does it like literally state that she is not married at this point? Because some of her... <clears throat> yeah, there's several lines that absolutely indicate. Well, I mean, in this song, she like specifically she tells him, "You forget yourself." It's not, you know, that's just because you're not in polite society that you didn't like overtly flirt with. 
Yeah, yeah. Married women. Yeah. Well, not just married women, any women. There were a lot of cultural, you know, boundaries around courtship. You know, and, and, and so their talk was getting a little revolved. But, um, you know, my only job is to marry rich. She, she's not married yet. And there's several other points as you catch. I mean, she indicates um, that she is single for quite a while. She's still single when she moves to Europe in, <laughs> in this version, <laughs> which she's already in Europe, apparently, you know, in real life at this point. But I, th I think he wants to show right early on here Hamilton's, because even though she's passed him off to Eliza, Hamilton definitely has a choice himself of who he pursues and who he wants to be wittiest and most charming with. Um, so I think this is also trying to set the battle of what we're going to get into in Maria Reynolds, the sexual scandals, his political battles that he takes on. I think, you know, this play is trying to set up Hamilton as a guy who is choosing between what is good for him and what he desires um, in actuality. But he really didn't have a choice, so she was married already, right? Right. But we wanted, he wanted, you know, but Lin-Manuel Miranda wanted to make that a choice. And we should, I don't know, we don't have to, but we might want to also address that Eliza, this question, is she helpless? I feel like the last song, Helpless, she's saying she's helpless, and then again she says that later, but it almost has a different meaning. When Eliza says she's helpless in the context of Angelica's song, yeah. Um, I I don't know. I, I mean, if, if you're interested in, in tracing that story, that I think that's really interesting. How this song also allows Eliza's character to be fleshed out a little more, too. Yeah. Well, I think overall you, you actually just kind of you said it pretty good. And we're going to see that idea of helpless change again over the course of the thing in terms of what expectations is that setting up for Eliza and how does that maybe surprise us as we move through the story. So, <coughs> any other comments anybody wants to make on this song or things they've all caught? Yeah. I really appreciate Note Number 10 on page 85 trying to out Ebony Ebony in this piece. Yeah. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Because yeah. it, it is very similar to uh, specifically all on my own number notes in, in like kind of content and structure. Yeah. yeah. Even even in song, yeah. She's saying she needs to be independent and in her own world. And if you haven't gone through yet, I'm trying to avoid, in general as, a, as an instructor, I like to try to avoid giving you what you have in your materials. Um, I figure your tuition money is better spent on me trying to encourage other discussions and insight. But yeah, uh, Lynn Manuel's, Con Manuel's comments in these dialogue boxes are just, this is the main reason why I did, you know, uh, require this book because he gives a lot of insights that are worth your thinking about as you're writing your own creative project. Yeah. Um, he talks about why he takes liberties. He talks about what he what he did, and, and it can give you brainstorming ideas. So it's not just if you're geeky, getting geeky about this show, um, like I am very, but it also provides a lot of wonderful writing exercises. For you. I think it also. It is also, it's also very personal. There are lots, of, if, if those of you who are following along, there are lots of these notes that are really about himself, and they just say, yeah, you know, chess was a big part of my life, and religion used to be part of my life. And that is just sort of fun in some ways. But in other ways, it's, you know, you probably heard as a writer, write what you know. You know, it's, he's writing, he's writing about Hamilton in a way that he, he's identifying with this character. He's creating this character in some ways, his own image. And that's what all of us do. That's what that's what that's what artists do. And if that if that's something that you find yourself doing as you're writing, that's okay. Just be be aware of it and be self conscious of it and, and of the ways that your character is artistically, you know, imprinted with yourself. Um, keep keep the film running. Before we listen to the next song, I kind of want to point out another thing. Like I said, this section is tests, allies, and enemies. And we're going to listen next to uh, the story of tonight and wait for it, which we very prominently and wait for it get to meet yet in more in depth another character. Um, the stuff that, is, especially in wait for it, this is stuff that we've introduced Burr way early, right at the very beginning. But I want to talk about why did he wait until now? You know, and wait for it to get more in depth 
And why is this such a good position, this section of the story, to meet so many characters? Um, beyond just the fact that this is kind of the structure. But there's a good reason for it. So uh, let's listen to the story tonight um, and wait for it, and then we'll continue our discussion. Okay.